Dean and Evans from Web Shop Manager. Uh, today, I want to talk to you about how to accelerate your brand, your brand value with e-commerce success. Um, and to provide a little clarity, to me, brand value is more than who you are today. It's who you want to be in the long in the long run and the legacy you want to leave. So I put together a roadmap here that anyone can can follow to become successful in e-commerce in a crawl, walk, run approach. Uh, today, we're going to talk about some e-commerce myths and finding your sweet spot, creating a, an ecosystem where you're not competing with the big guys, uh, how to participate on a local level, uh, on, an, on a niche level, and, and as a manufacturer, uh, and then what could be along with three actionable next steps. So I'd like to start by uh, shattering a couple e-commerce myths. I talk to hundreds of people every year. Uh, about e-commerce and getting started, people that are maybe selling on eBay or people that are brick and mortar and want to sell online or just want to show their products. Um, one of the common myths that I hear is, is that you have to be everything to everybody. Uh, how, many of you, how many of you here know uh, AutoAnything.com? AutoAnything was the largest, uh, the largest uh, aftermarket parts and accessory website that just got bought by AutoZone. Uh, they're doing a couple hundred million dollars a year in sales. And they have a, have a million and a half SKUs. So when people come to us, they want to be auto anything. Say, I want to sell seat covers and tonneau covers and, and every part under the sun. Uh, and, and to me, that is a recipe for disaster when you're starting out because it's very difficult to pivot, uh, very difficult to make changes. And if you start small, then you can, you can find what's working and you can pivot easier. Uh, the next myth, uh, build it and they will come. Uh, David touched on that. Um, you, have to, you have to be committed to marketing your website but marketing doesn't have to be pay-per-click and SEO. Marketing can be just training your sales team on how to use this new tool and how to promote it to, to their customers and, and your dealers. Um, and then the, the next myth is that everything has to be perfect. Um, I, I had the unfortunate uh, knowledge of a, a new startup that spent $30,000 to buy a domain name because it was perfect. They wanted to have this perfect two-word domain name. And I think to myself, $30,000 would be a great marketing budget to start out to launch a new website. Uh, so, uh, and I've seen people spend a year bringing together the perfect data set with hundreds of thousands of SKUs. And, and that's just precious time where you could be starting small. Um, and, and then uh, the, the next myth is that e-commerce has to be national. Um, the reality of it is a local business, a local store is a niche. You have a niche in a geographic area. A niche can be part type, you could be selling radiators. Uh, a niche can be vehicle, you could be selling parts for just one particular manufacturer. Uh, so, uh, but that leads people to think that, well, if I start in a niche, if I start just selling radiators, is that gonna, is that gonna limit my potential? Um, and, and going back to the story about auto anything, uh, you know, they, just, they just sold the, the sons, the, the father handed it off to the sons and they, they built the e-commerce side of it. They actually started out as blue ribbon motoring, uh, manufacturing uh, sheepskin seat covers. So that, and if you go back in Wayback Machine, uh, which is an archive website, you can see in 2000, they had a, a website with seat covers on the homepage and a couple other interior parts. And from that, they built this, this enormous empire. Uh, so, so you might be asking, well, well why a niche? Um, products, at the end of the day, products are commodities. So you have to provide real value. And each one of you provide value to your customers today in different ways. Uh, if you think of uh, an oil filter, an oil filter is a perfect product to sell on Amazon because the part number's on it. You know, I unscrew it from the engine, the part number's on it, I go Google it, and I can buy it. I don't need help from anyone to figure out what oil filter fits what in most cases. Uh, whereas there are other products like a transmission that is very complex. I want advice on how to buy, what, what specifications I might need, et cetera. Uh, so what I'm, what I'm talking about is on the e-commerce side, to really truly compete, you want to solve pre-purchase problems with content and information that, that is triggered in the early stages of the buying process. When people are thinking, I have a problem to solve, I'm gonna go Google it, and then your website's what comes up with the answer and the information that turns into a phone call and a sale and a, and a new relationship. And this is gonna build high converting brand loyalty for you over time. So the very first step in this really is to find your sweet spot. Uh, and, and a lot of the, a lot of the um, uh, talks that talk about finding your sweet spot focus on passion. Uh, you know, passion is, is uh, kind of a unique area because to everyone, passion is revealed in different ways. Uh, you don't want to focus on passion alone, though, because then you could end up as a starving artist. What you want to find is your true interest, where that intersects with your core expertise, what you're really good at, and what the market needs that's not being fulfilled. So you can discover who your ideal customer is. And you might already be thinking of who, who your ideal customer is and have an idea of who they are, 
why do they like you and why do you like them? So if you think about that, um, you know, if you're, if you're focused in on your ideal customer and you figure out how could I serve that ideal customer better, you create an opportunity to grow a, real, a different kind of business. And, and I'm just gonna give you an example. This might be totally off the wall, but I'm kind of building on the, the conversations I've had and the research I've done. If you think some, somewhere, somewhere in this room probably is a distributor in North Dakota, and, and he's supplying parts to the oil, the oil and gas industry that's growing dramatically, uh, although there's ups and downs. Uh, but if you were to think about what's great about that customer, and I'm, I'm partly speculating, but that customer is probably great because they, they need parts, they need parts fast, they, they have a lot of money, they're growing, it's, it's a great industry. Uh, and if you've decided based on your analysis that that's your best customer and you were to call them up and start asking questions like, what could I do to serve you better? Maybe, maybe their biggest pain is they need somebody they can talk to at three in the morning. And, and maybe they need somebody who can put that part on an airplane and fly it out in the middle of the night to keep a crew from standing around uh, dead in the water. And if you start talking that through, and, and well, what would that look for? What would that look like for them? How could that increase their revenue? If you were able to provide a service like that, uh, you know, who else? You, you get that nailed down, and you got a, a charter a charter airline that will fly parts for you, and, and with helicopters and planes. Uh, who else might need that? The forest service, service um, you know, uh, other uh, uh, emergency responders might be able to use that. You become the uh, the truckpartslifeflight.com of the entire market. You know, we are the guys who are here 24 seven, we can get parts to you now. So that's just one example. But if you start asking those questions of your best customers, what you'll find is if you're aiming right for that center of the bullseye, you're gonna start hitting other places really close to that bullseye. Whereas if you're aiming for the entire target, you're just gonna hit the entire target. So I'm, I'm talking about laser focus on your ideal customer. And so not everybody is gonna start there right away. So I'm gonna talk about a couple paths forward. In, in local e-commerce is a great way to start. Each, a lot of you are a distributor with a local business and a local customer base. Uh, you wanna build on what works well for you today. You know, you've got everyth everything in stock that sells frequently. Uh, you have a very knowledgeable staff. That's something Amazon doesn't have. Uh, you, you're great for emergency repairs and, and handling large products. You know, if I need a brake job, uh, I'm probably not gonna go on Amazon and wait for it to be shipped when I can have it delivered or drive over and pick it up get it loaded into my truck. So you wanna leverage what you do well today. Uh, and uh, I always talk about how do you get started? Uh, we, I'll, I'll tell you a story, instead of going through these points, um, how many of you are familiar with Fitzgerald glider kits? It's, it's a, a, an up and coming industry where with the, uh, uh, they take a, a rolling chassis and you can put your, rebuild an older engine to put in there to, to avoid the emissions uh, issues. They've got a customer base that have bought trucks from them, and they they came to us and said, "How can we build? How can we build? A, get into e-commerce and leverage our customer base that we already have, a captive audience of people who trust us and and need parts for their trucks." I said, "Start out small. Start out with your top 500 SKUs, the 500 SKUs that sell really well, that that you're that you're you have in stock, that that you understand well. Uh, list those on the website and launch the website. Get it up there, and just as as a test." and locally optimize your categories. You got a category for brakes, you got a category for clutches. Put your city name in there and in the, any of the other cities that you serve in the area uh, and, and train your team on it. What they've got now is this, this website it's, you know, that they're building over time. Uh, they take pictures as they sell. So they started out with 500 SKUs, uh, they've been live for about eight months and they, they have, you know, as they sell new products, they just you know, take an iPhone, take a picture of it, load it on the website. So they're building it up as they go. They're up to a thousand SKUs now. It becomes a sales tool. The salespeople are selling with the website, using it as a reference for the customers. They can email a link to buy the product to their customer. Uh, and, and it also becomes a training tool when they bring on new employees. You know, a, they hire a new employee. They, they might be able to use that website as a training tool to learn more about the products they carry and, and not have to, to slow the rest of the more experienced team members down. Um, and they create a dealer login for each of their dealers so they have a private place to go buy parts at their special pricing. Uh, and, and it becomes this a, a lot, uh, it, it ends up, I guess the, the immediate concern to some of you might be, well, that's not really adding new orders. That's just taking orders that my sales guys are already handling and just putting them on the website. Does that really do anything for me? And I argue, yes, it does. Because right now you've got experienced guys that are just being order takers. In half the time, they're just taking orders. So why not transition that busy work of the order, order taking to the website so they can spend more time pursuing your ideal customers and more time nurturing your ideal customers? 
Uh, and, and I think that's a great, a great approach. Uh, they launched the website with 500 SKUs. We're doing 50 orders a month, and now they're up to 100 orders a month on this, this what essentially was a very basic startup website. And I, and I mean, to you guys, does that sound like something you could do? I sure do. The next evolution of this is a, a niche. You know, if you want to sell nationally to the entire country, you know, a lot of you specialize, whether it's in drivetrain, transmissions, uh, you know, here is a, a air brake conversion kit for agriculture. Um, it's, it's a great opportunity when you've got a team of people that are specialized in, cer in a certain area to become the expert, the, the go-to uh, person for that. So in thinking that along those terms, you want to think about products that are confusing, uh, where people are going to do pre-sales research. I mean, this, this type of product seems like it's, it's purchased by somebody with a specific need to move an agricultural vehicle to work on the highway. Uh, it's probably the first time they've done it. Our, we're all DIY oriented guys. I mean, we want to do things ourselves. We want to research it ourselves. We're not looking for somebody to tell us what to do, but we might be looking for somebody to help us get to the answer we're looking for. So pre-sales pre research, multiple components, complex installations, and post-sale support. If I buy this product on Amazon and, and I've got my, my project ripped apart in the garage and I have a problem, my only option is to return it to Amazon. But if I buy it from you, I, I could call you if I have a question while I'm installing it, I can call and get help. That is a huge value. And Amazon's not going after that customer. Amazon wants the guy that just needs the filter. Amazon's looking for a low return rate. They're not looking for a high return rate. They're actually, if you're doing third party sales on Amazon, Amazon's gonna let you handle that complex stuff and deal with those returns. And they're gonna, they're gonna bring in the easy stuff that they can turn quickly. Uh, and so that, thinking about the right type of customer, customers with a problem to solve, uh, customers that are shops and fleets where they're going to order more, order more frequently. Um, and the government, government can be an interesting area. Uh, Banks Power is a, is a customer of ours. Uh, they just landed the contract to build all the crate motors for the, the Oshkosh light tactical vehicle, which uh, I got to imagine is a pretty great uh, contract to get. Um, and then enthusiasts. Our, our biggest market that overlaps to this industry is the diesel performance. We have a lot of diesel customers that you guys probably know. Um, but the enthusiast market is growing quickly. And I kind of had an epiphany. I know there's a lot of interest in how do we get millennials engaged. Uh, and, and a big thing in the SEMA market is the customizing and accessorizing. And I think that there's probably an opportunity to be, get more engagement uh, within the heavy duty industry with the accessorizing and making those products more available and trying to cross over into the existing young market where they're, where they're customizing their vehicles. And, and I do see, I'm on Instagram, I see people customizing big rigs. I, I know that's a, that's a market that has an opportunity and that's the, that's the, the monkey's paw or the lead in to get people interested in a, in a, a long-term career. So uh, as you're thinking about the products that you wanna sell, you want, you're, you've got all this complexity. You've got these products that are complex with lots of parts and lots of components. You're gonna have to describe that on your website. That's part of this training material that you're creating and that's gonna drive sales. You're creating content and Google doesn't want a page that's just stuffed with keywords and optimized and you know, SEO ninja type stuff. Google wants real content that people search for because Google's customer is your customer. Google's customer starts out going to Google and saying, I need part X, Y, Z. And they do a search, they find your website, they go into it, they make a purchase. Google tracks that conversion through Google Analytics and sees that the customer started out with a search and ended with a happy purchase. That cycle is what Google's looking for. So the better you can do at fulfilling that process, the better you're gonna rank in Google. It's, it's shifted away from optimization and more towards the entire ecosystem. Uh, and so you're looking at products that you're gonna be able to create content as you're describing them. Uh, the good middle price point, I mean, a, a, a bearing or something real small, you can't afford to fulfill that order. You can't afford to pay someone to go put that little, you know, 15 or $35 bearing in a box and ship it. Amazon can, they've got machines that ship that out. So that's not the game you're looking to compete in. Uh, so you're looking at a good middle price point uh, that have a good profit margin, um, you know, uh, transmission, turbos, those all have good profit margin. You could start there, that's a cornerstone product of someone's purchase for their project uh, and build from there. They're gonna buy all the add-ons and the, you know, the piping and the, the exhaust and all the different parts and components. Uh, so you want products with staying power. You don't want to optimize a product and have it go obsolete and, and, or, or become irrelevant. Uh, it, hard, products that are hard to find locally uh, and projects that are planned, those kind of tie in together. I mean, there's certain, there's certain products as an end user or as a service shop, you know that this is going to be a special order product. 
So you're gonna be thinking, well, I'll just cut out the middleman and go on the internet and buy it online. So why can't they be buying it from you as a specialist? Uh, so as you're selling the products, you wanna focus on the metrics, make sure that you're, as you're, you list your 500 SKUs, there's gonna be some that maybe are a little bit more, way, more favored towards retail uh, and more that are better on e-commerce. So you'll build on that. The, the products that sell, you wanna list more of those. The products that don't sell, maybe you don't focus on them as much. And then validating the potential of the market before you dive into this. I, and I've got a, uh, you wanna measure the market demand, make sure there's a, a need for the products and then measure the competition. So I've, I've got an ebook that I'm publishing that uh, that'll give you a little more information at the end on how you can uh, get that from me as well. And then I'll touch quickly here on the manufacturer side. Brands that get it right win. The best brands have good websites and they tie everything together. Good sales information. Um, I, I put together kind of a little mocked up Meritor product landing page here with information. That's the kind of information a salesperson needs when they're talking to a customer or talking to a dealer to be able to support the, the overall process. Um, a, a good website becomes a product catalog. You know, it's, it's something, I mean, I don't have a print catalog with me out in the field. I don't have a print catalog with me in the back of the shop, but every single mechanic's got a phone in their pocket. So you want your catalog on that phone. You want them to be able to get through it quickly and easily uh, and, and tying in the dealer portal as well. Um, my, my experience working in e-commerce is that just about every single e-commerce company I've ever talked to that's successful has a brand. They either are a brand, they have a private label brand, uh, and it's because buyers seek authority. You know, a client of ours, Sinister Diesel, they, they started out as MKM Customs, created their own brand, Sinister Diesel, to sell on MKM Customs, and then they ended up switching over to Sinister Diesel as their main website, and they, they only have like 5,000 SKUs on the website and do an insane amount of business. Uh, just being the manufacturer, being the source. Uh, that's not to say that any of the manufacturers in this room want to go into e-commerce, but what I am saying is everybody should be thinking about, if you're an expert on transmissions, why not create your own brand of transmissions, your own line, and private label someone else's transmission where you can build that brand value, the bigger, the whole ecosystem. And I'll talk, I'll just recap here quickly and talk about what could be. Um, products are commodities, so you must provide real value. Uh, you want to find your sweet spot, nurture your ideal customer, uh, solve pre-purchase problems with and building that content on your website to, to build high converting brand loyalty. Uh, and what you'll get is an army of loyal customers that trust your brand and maximize your lifetime value. So I want, I want you for a second to visualize your future. Imagine one year from now, you got a website generating 100 orders per month. I think that's reasonable. Uh, you can go on vacation without worrying about things blowing up. Your new team members can use the website as a sales support tool, and it's a training tool for your team. And you know, millennials are gonna choose you over the competition because you get it. You guys are online, you use, you're utilizing technology. There's a future with this company because you know, that, that's probably the biggest message. And I'll, I'll end here with a story. A, a good friend of mine, uh, Derek Dobson from, uh, he started out as Dale's Billet, he's now Dale's Superstore. Uh, he was a billet grill, he private labeled someone else's billet grills and, and branded them as his own. Uh, and he was, he noticed, he kind of followed this entire, the, the process and he took all three, all three pieces and put it together. Uh, he started to notice that he was selling the most grills to the diesel performance industry. He said, there's a real opportunity in diesel performance. And you know, these guys are buying grills and they're calling me and say, hey, by the way, can you get me this exhaust system too? And put two and two together. And he started laying out a plan to build a website to sell just diesel performance and, and rebrand as Dale Superstore. And he, he, he did the research and, and he found some companies, he was working with a couple different providers to put together a website. And they, and they really kind of, stu they stuttered and struggled. And he, he felt frustrated because it, this process took over a year. He had been working on it for over a year. And he kind of felt constrained because he had a big idea. He knew there was a gold mine. He knew there was an opportunity here to do something big. Uh, and, and we worked with him. We, he, he, he and I met at SEMA a couple years ago and we put together a solution. We launched this website within 90 days. And, and he was right. With his first full year, he did $1.3 million in sales on the website with just a, a, a maybe 1,500 SKUs on the website. And, and fast forwarding, he's continued to grow significantly and he's outsourced, I mean, he's only two people, it's him and one other guy running this. And he, he's continued to, he outsources his SEO and pay-per-click to good, good companies and, and he's vetted them and, and we have partners as well that can help with that. Um, but he, he's continued to grow and last month he had his best month of all. Uh, he did 687 orders these are all high, high value diesel performance. Uh, so it's a, to me, it's a great success story of somebody who's kind of covered all these parts and, and put together a winning combination. So three actionable next steps for everybody. 
First, you wanna find a viable niche with a legitimate revenue potential, which again, maybe local, might start out with your local customer base that already trusts you. Uh, you wanna evaluate your competition. Is there room for improvement? Uh, you know, if you're, if you're looking at a niche, like, uh, you know, like diesel, uh, you know, diesel crate engines, <clears throat> you can go online and search and see what other people are doing. You, you have your own intuition on what's a legitimate revenue potential for a niche. And then you do the research and there's only two other guys selling and one of those websites doesn't even work on mobile, you could probably go in there and make a killing, you know? But if you're going in there uh, and you see 20 other people competing and you got some really great websites, it may be a tougher, might be a tougher climb. And you don't wanna, you don't wanna start out uh, behind the eight ball. So uh, I've put together an ebook, it's 50 pages, everything I know, 20 years of experience in e-commerce, I started out, I did everything you guys have done. I was a yard, yard rat in a junkyard right out of high school. I've, I've built you know, eight trucks. I, I've, I've been in every, every nook and cranny of the enthusiast market. So I understand this and, and I've, I've figured out what it takes to become successful it, that carries over directly to all the heavy duty market. And we do a lot of stuff in power sports and everything, even looking at industrial. And I put this together 50 pages into how to build a profitable niche. We're gonna publish it on Amazon. Uh, I, will, I will give everybody in this room a free copy uh, just send me an email, subject ebook, send it to Dana at webshopmanager.com and I'll send you a copy of that when it comes out. And then uh, bonus, bonus action step, if you already have a website, anybody who has a website, uh, there's a, a product called Lucky Orange. Uh, it's really neat, it lets you watch your visitors in real time. Even if you have a, uh, a brochure website, it's really cool to see people, how they're reading through, they move the mouse over the text and then click on the contact us. Uh, you can learn a lot from watching how people interact with your website and that's kind of next level but i wanted to cover everybody and try to bring some value to everybody here so it's been really great learning the industry getting to know everybody uh everybody's been great and i look forward to to uh getting to know the rest of you and uh seeing how we can help you grow thank you Bye.